call tonight's Homes of Planning Board CIP Capital Improvements Plan Workshop to order. Anna, please call the roll. Ron LaHoulier. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Mark Richardson. Here. Chris Horton. Over here. David Witham. Here. Rob Belmore. Here. Robert Belmore. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to City Manager Belmore for his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Board. Uh, Behind me, I'm sorry I have my back to you, but we have various city department heads and uh, school staff. We don't have any members uh, in the audience from the public. Uh, but for those uh, watching at home or who watch this uh, as it's uh, archived, uh, Bob Belmore, city manager for the city. Uh, after I go through various slides to outline some of our programs that are included for next year's CIP, uh, in future years, I'll turn it over to school staff to go through a couple of slides and present what they have in the CIP program. Um, then we'll turn it back to the planning board to offer comments and discussion. So once again, this is a presentation for the CIP program 2026 to 2031. Most folks in this room are familiar with the process. The CIP development process begins with staff receiving a manager's directive, and we hold an initial meeting in June. This year was June 26th. Department recommendations are due on August 9th of this year, so we're past that date also. I review departmental requests with department heads in September, and then we finalize the presentation and send it off to the planning board. Why the planning board reviews it? Several years ago, um, there was no review committee for the CIP. It was merely uh, developed and given to the city council. When I became manager, uh, state law requires a review by a board, and that board can be either a special CIP committee uh, garnered by the governing body or the legislative body or the planning board. And the city council at that time uh, designated the planning board to review the CIP on an annual basis. I think part of that rationale in the state law perhaps is, is welded in or melded in to the fact that the planning board is charged with the master plan. And the master plan of the CIP uh, should go hand in glove as the community moves forward. Um, section in the city charter requires the manager to submit a CIP to the council at least three months prior to the final date of submission of his, his or her proposed budget, which is December 15th of each year. The manager provides funding recommendations as part of his submittal or her submittal of the annual operating budget proposal sent to the city council. The school board submits the CIP package, which is approved by the school board. Project criteria to be included in the CIP. In order to be included with the CIP, a project needs to have an annual aggregate cost of 25000 or more and have a useful life of five years or greater. In addition, the project needs to satisfy one of the following criteria. Acquisition of land, constru construction or expansion of a facility or utility, utility lines, which is our water and sewer lines. Non-recurring rehabilitation of a facility, in other words, a one-time shot of re rehabilitating a, a city facility. Design work or planning study related to an individual project, and our equipment rolling stock. And uh, as you can well imagine, those are our, our police cruisers, our unmarked police cruisers, our code cars, um, fire apparatus, uh, highway plow trucks, and other plow-related uh, highway equipment such as backhoes and that sort of thing. We give each uh, item or project a priority rating, one, two, or three. The highest priority is one, and that uh, a little bit of rationale after each priority listed. That priority one is a non-funding of this project may adversely impact the city and may increase future municipal costs. In other words, if we don't done it, do it now, uh, the cost to do it later may increase, or if it's a vehicle of some, of some or equipment of some nature may. Uh, uh, require a lot more uh, money to repair and keep it on the road. Priority two, funding of this project will benefit the city's short and medium term interest. A project of this priority will enhance the city's essential infrastructure 
and should be funded if possible in the year indicated. Priority three is something that benefits the city's long-term interest, and this should be evaluated, quite frankly, every year to determine whether it needs a new priority level. Priority recommendations, one, these priority one items are fire replacement of uh, SCBA, and that's uh, self-contained breathing apparatus, and that's $107,000. And um, by the way, uh, Anna in the planning office and Dana Crosley in the planning office uh, helped develop and, and kind of tweak the presentation as well as the booklet itself. You'll see uh, one particular thing that we added in the booklet was a listing of all of our equipment that wasn't in there before. Uh, they're also noting the page where you can find these particular items in the various departments and what page, section and page they're on. Uh, police crews are one this year. We go one, one cruise of one year to the next. This year, we originally were going to budget one, but the council, uh, because of the need, uh, we did two this year, so we're back to one for next year. Replacement of police portable radios is 123000 And by the way, one police cruiser is about 76200 And when we outfit an apparatus, or in this case, a police cruiser or any of our equipment, we, we try to make sure that we include everything to outfit it. So for a police cruiser, obviously, it's the, uh, the computer and the emergency equipment, the radio, et cetera. Everything needs to be included in that package. Uh, pavement management, 900000 Franklin and Green Street area needs a drainage line, a slip line at 100 k and sidewalk improvements at 120. And we started sidewalk improvements, as you may recall, a couple of years ago to plug that into the CIP on a regular basis instead of just the, you know, it was some, some years it was like 30000 or 50000 So we're trying to be more aggressive in, in trying to uh, attack our sidewalks, rehabilitate them. Priority two, we have the master plan update. We budgeted 25 this year. We look to do 25 next year and continue that for three, four years. But our uh, planning office has been very uh, successful in securing grants, so we're actually grabbing more chapters than, the, than we're budgeted for. So uh, uh, kudos to them, and we thank them for their uh, diligence. Housing, land use, and natural resources will be completed this year. And targeted for next year, we have transportation, economic development, and also a chapter on his historical and cultural resources. Memori Memorial Drive tennis courts down off uh, by the middle and high schools, uh, almost $73,000. Public works combination plow truck, $276,500. Uh, public Works Replacement of Sidewalk Tractor, 250K. Blackwater Road, Laurel Lane to 108. A water Main Engineering Design at 53,000. And Water Treatment Plant Upgrades Engineering Design at uh, almost 513,000. So total priority two comes in at just about 1.2 million. Multi-year projects. Uh, again, we've done this w w with a series of projects over the years. The one noted here is, again, for the SCBA replacement program, the second year of a three-year program, 107,000 police cruises. One this year, 76,200. And uh, just note, as many of you may recall, we do a lease purchase arrange arrangement for our uh, police cruises in many, most of our vehicles. Uh, road resurfacing again, nine hundred thousand, and sidewalk improvement, one hundred twenty thousand. Funding sources for twenty twenty six. Uh, this really hasn't changed from year to year. Um, since we don't have any income tax or sales tax, we get uh, just a limited amount of revenue from the state. We have to rely on property taxes for our general fund, and our utility funds, our water and sewer are uh, user-based funds. They're not related to uh, property taxes. It's distinct from that. Uh, we do have a special fund for a pay-per-bag program uh, that's also um, distinct from our property taxes, although the recycling is, is based with the property tax base in our general fund. Leases and bonds, we, we have lease purchase arrangements that, that I mentioned regarding some equipment and vehicles. 
and bond issues paid over time by general property tax funds. And sometimes when we do a bond, it, we have we split like constitutional road, complete streets. There's some uh, uh, water and sewer being done, so that's a separate uh, allocation of that particular bond, um, where the sidewalks and the streetscape and the pavement and so and the drainage is is under the general fu fund section of the that project's budget. Grants or other sources of funding generally they're they're grants from uh, the federal or state government. And again, our water and sewer funds are, are based from user fees, whether they're individual, residential, or, or businesses. Net tax rate impact, when you compare 2026 CIP proposal to 2025 actual budgeted capital budget uh, that was uh, allocated and appropriated by the City Council. Fiscal 2026 proposed CIP operating budget is a little over 1.3 million. The 25 approved capital budget in the general fund was 1,045,000. <clears> the net impact being almost 280,000 increase. So the estimated net tax rate impact would be 15 cents. And uh, we provide a note that for every 192,174 would, in, uh, would result in approximately an estimated 10 cent increase in the tax rate. And that's utilizing the new assessed value through the revaluation process that we just completed. Projects with completed or ongoing projects. Fleet purchases in 25 included two police cruises, one unmarked police vehicle, one transit van for recreation, one pickup for code enforcement. We now have two pickups in the code enforcement department. Uh, we always had one for our chief code enforcement officer, our building inspector. Uh, we thought it prudent and did some shuffling with uh, our vehicles and, and purchased one for the code compliance officer <coughs> or gave him the building inspectors and bought a new one for the, the chief building um, office <coughs> official uh, because he, he helps with, uh, you know, whether it's picking up garbage that's left on the road the highway can't get to or or illegal signs and that sort of thing, he can just throw it in the back of the bed. It just seemed it would have more functionality. Other equipment or, or projects, we have the master plan update this year, one chapter, uh, portable vacuum unit regarding sewage blockage, wastewater treatment facility lab roof needs a uh, HVAC unit, design and engineering for water main replacement in the Go Hill Road, Main Street to Rita Road, as well as uh, looking at Old Rochester Road, a line on Old Rochester Road. Continuing to look back at completed or ongoing projects, we have road resurfacing projects. They're scheduled to be conducted in the spring of 25, and we've uh, been very successful with this new scheduling and timeline of going out to bid in, uh, um, you know, uh, early winter um, so, and uh, getting getting the bids. We, we're getting very responsive and competitive bids to go out in the st to do the work in the spring. Um, Public Works and Environment have had a meeting and voted to recommend the following streets. Resurfacing Granite Way, Woodchuck Lane, as well as High Street from West High to South Street. To bond the reconstruction of Willand Drive, Route 108 to Commercial Street. And Flint Street, um, our city engineer has, has looked at a cost estimate for that from Franco Drive to Albert Street. It's a very small street servicing just residential, a few residential homes, but it's in terrible shape. Whether we do a shim and overlay or major reconstruction, that funding decision will be taken up by the Finance Committee at tomorrow uh, afternoon's meeting. And then we'll get a full resolution to the Council uh, to vote on this list of streets and so forth. Sidewalk repairs are scheduled for the spring also. We haven't uh, gone to a council committee to, to actually uh, designate what sidewalks we'll do other than High Street has been identified to be done. So that would be the opposite side of the new, new sidewalk we did under the TAP grant. So we would do the other side as well as paving that area. Uh, this is something we thought we'd start including as, as anticipated projects for future CIPs that we've, we've been talking about. 
Um, and these include improvements to the police station, which was constructed in 2008. We're going to have to start thinking about what year a roof replacement needs to be uh, budgeted for. We want to look at parking lot improvements, generator replacement, comprehensive flooring replacement. There's a lot of wear and tear uh, over time from 2008 to whenever we plug it into the next CIP, um, as well as engineering studies and design for possible expansion. Uh, one thing we, we, we chose not to do at the time was maybe quarterbacking on Monday perhaps might have been a better decision to include money to have some sort of carport or garage area to keep some of the cruises, the frontline cruises, uh, away f out of the uh, inclement weather in the winter, the, the ice and snow. Um, Romeo Messier building is our Ward 5 polling location. We'd like to look at improvements for that. It's an old building. It used to be a Ward 5 fire station, quite frankly, back in the day. It's dedicated to a former city councilor, Romeo Messier, and there's a plaque on it. But it's in, in, it needs some, uh, needs some TLC, and we'd like to look at perhaps improving that. Blackwater Road reconstruction also. Um, one thing I di didn't mention, but I want to make sure you, you recall that it's on our radar, is we are engaged uh, with um, our selected architectural firm, um, Place, Place One, right? Place Work. Place Work. So we did a phase one design for the library, improvements and expansion. We're in the process with them of doing phase two. So once we get that, we'll start to get hard costs and, and look at uh, shoring up what year we might be able to swap a bond that's retiring and, and move that project forward. It's in need for, for um, not only improvements for ADA, but also some expansion is, is well due. The other thing that w I think was mentioned maybe last year even at, uh, from the planning board, one planning board member was looking at uh, pre-ordering uh, apparatus. So I have directed the fire chief to look at the process for pre-ordering um, our, our aerial ladder truck. So it's coming towards the end of its uh, uh, life expectancy, uh, end of service. So he has started looking into that as far and <coughs> we'll have more on that and go back to uh, the appropriate city council committees and eventually the city council if it is deemed warranted to move forward with pre-ordering. That's quickly it for me for now, and I'll turn it over to uh, Katie, our business administrator, and Jay Lilly, our, uh, the school uh, grounds head, head superintendent, or whatever your title is, Jay. Good evening, everybody. Katie Krause, business administrator, and Jay Lilly, our facilities director. Um, so for the school department, um, we often have difficulties including capital improvements into our operating budget, so we really rely on being creative and trying to fund these in different ways, whether it be the city council genu you know, generously uh, approving our adequacy funds to allow us to do these one-time projects. We rely on grant funding. We were able to complete our uh, roof project using our ESSER funds or um, using our year-end funds to uh, you know, complete our projects. So um, from the CIP from last year to this year, we were able to complete two projects, um, the SAU 56 office, HVAC replacement. So we had two units at the office that both wore down. One end of the building had no heat. The other end of the building had no AC. So last year with year-end funds, we had to do um, an emergency replacement of the end of the building that had no heat because for six months we had no heat, plus we also had um, three carbon monoxide scares and having to have the staff be checked out by EMTs and everything. So we replaced one unit last year and then uh, we budgeted for the other unit in July so we were able to complete that project. And then we were also able to purchase two tractor, two, one, one, one tractor, tractor yep. and a few snow blowers for snow removal um, with year-end funds. For additions to the CIP, um, we added replacing or refinishing the Idlehurst gym floor. Um, high school football field lighting upgrades. I don't know if Jay has. Sure, essentially on that. that would be just upgrading those lights to LED lights that don't use a ton of electricity and are more a, a better better lighting the field, more safe. Uh, we also have talked about the option of adding 
lights to the back side of the array onto the practice field. So that would give us more capabilities this time of year to have practices on the on the practice field because it gets gets tough this time of year. Um, the next item, sorry, Katie, is the uh, track runaway um, high jump pit. So this would be like a 50 yard sort of uh, single or double double uh, run with a pit at the end where you could do high jump or long jump um, type type practices um, just to give the uh, give the track athletes a safe place to do it where they're not doing it in the cafeteria and hurting their shins on that hard floor. And then for ongoing projects that we keep on the CIP each year would be our security upgrades. Um, we're, we were lucky this year we were awarded um, approximately about $170,000 in safety grants from the state of New Hampshire. So we are completing um, numerous security upgrades ranging from uh, adding more badge access to our buildings, camera upgrades, indoor um, lock replacements, um, visitor management software for the high school so that we can track our visitors that come in and out of the building. Am I missing anything? No, I think those are it. So this is the total CIP for the school district. Um, as I said, it's hard for us to add these into the budget, so it's more of a planning document. So if we have funds become available, we are able to look at our CIP and see what we can accomplish. Um, so as I said, our priorities have been security. The board has really been um, wanting to upgrade our security for our buildings. So the two at the top are security upgrades. The SAU would be adding ADA accept accessibility in the front. We do have an entrance towards the side of the building, but it would be adding that as well as upgrading our security. And then 100000 each year for all of district-wide security upgrades. The Maplewood HVAC upgrade. I don't know if you have anything to add to that. So essentially that was part of the renovations back, I believe, in 2020, uh, right before my time here. Um, some of those items, due to cost, got held out of the project. Um, so it's kind of been piecemealed, but some of those, we're kind of getting to the point now where some of those units, we can't Frankenstein them anymore. Some of the HVAC, HVAC units can't be fixed and we can't find even motors that can, can be plugged into work. So we're kind of getting to the point where we have to to find a way to make those to make those improvements down the road. The next one is the SAU SAU building roof replacement. And then the next two are for the middle school. These have been on here for a number of years. It's finishing the window replacement. We were able to do the front windows and some of the side windows. Um, this is finishing that middle school project. And then bathroom renovations at the middle school. We mentioned the track. Um, on here are two vehicles, one for a new maintenance truck and plow, and then one for a district-wide bus. So it's more of like a small bus that we could transport our smaller athletic teams like golf um, and our CTC students to different um, various things that they need to attend. Uh, the next one is the Maplewood lot parking lot reconfiguration. This is something that's been on here for a few years, um, redoing that whole parking lot situation at Maplewood so we avoid the backup that happens when we have drop off and pick up at Maplewood. This is going to be probably going up in priority um, the next time we do the CIP because this is really getting to be something that we need to take care of. District-wide paving for the entire district, um, asbestos floor replacement, uh, SAU 56 lighting upgrades, and then, as I mentioned, the gym floor replacement or upgrades, and then the high school football field lighting upgrades. Okay. Nope. And that's all we have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, make sure I thank all the city department heads and their staff um, for the work on this CIP, and also to, to special thanks to Anna and Dana for helping out. And the rationale for that, again, if I didn't mention it previously, um, is to make sure we're focused on the master plan and making sure it works well with the CIP and we're achieving uh, what the goals are in the master plan. Uh, so we, we, we're striving to, to include the planning office a little bit more. Um, in part A is we're more focused on finance, but we want to pivot a little bit and make sure we're focused also on the master plan and including that. So thank you. Uh, Anna and, and Dana for uh, being included and be willing to work with uh, uh, the team in producing this document. 
Uh, I'd also like to mention that we did receive some comments from, from a, um, a Bill, Bill Connor on Pinewood Drive, and I think you all received a copy of it. So I wanted to thank Bill for uh, uh, sending in his comments. He talks about the new water tower that we're in the process, the Hamilton Street water tank, sometimes just referred as the Noble Pines water tank. Um, that's being discussed <clears throat> at the council level and being designed by our engineers. He talks about and offers some comments about this, the water treatment plant and improvements there. He talks about the police department and some uh, consideration of some improvements in regards to the parking lot and so forth. <coughs> Excuse me. He talks about the ladder truck and Willian Drive. So thank you, Bill, and I'll turn it back to the to the board for uh, comments and discussion. <coughs> comments from the board, Mr. Witham. Yeah, just a a few comments, I guess. Here, so uh, city manager had a note in the presentation about the reconstruction someday of Blackwater Road. Uh, I think certainly that needs to be somewhere on our radar screen. Um, one of the comments that I would have there is for staff to consider the walkability of that road. As I think most know, we have a sidewalk that goes up to Crest Drive, but then nothing further. And I'm not sure that construction of a sidewalk is feasible uh, or financially possible, but when we do get to a stage of reconstructing Blackwater Road, at least making a wider paved shoulder uh, to accommodate either bike traffic or pedestrian traffic. Right now, the fog line is at edge of pavement for all intents and purposes, and uh, <clears throat> just makes it really difficult for anybody with a bike or uh, pedestrians. And there's a fair amount of pedestrian traffic with the Sherwood Glen mobile home complex there. I know that we're looking at the state doing the 108 upgrade complete streets. That will have sidewalks, so there would be a disconnect between our existing sidewalk on Blackwater Road and the sidewalk network that will ultimately be constructed on 108. So just being mindful of that connectivity, and you speak about the master plan, our master plan speaks about walkability. That just seems to be a stretch that we ought to be contemplating an approach out there. Whether it's a sidewalk, wider shoulders, or Perhaps some combination thereof uh, seems to make sense. Um, I took note of the allocation of dollars in the CIP for paving in the school department, uh, up to and including the, the rework and repaving at Maplewood. And, and I know that the school department, CIP, and the city CIP stand uh, separate. But I think when it comes to paving projects, wherever possible, it just seems to me it makes sense to look at consolidating our paving efforts. And I'll use the example when we did Cemetery Road, uh, Continental Paving uh, was the subcontractor for SUR, and we leveraged their economy of scale, just the amount of hot top that was being purchased for that road to uh, at least improve that access road around the high school and middle school. So. I'm not sure what that approach is, but I think whenever the city, if we're buying a million dollars worth of paving a year and the school department needs 100000 it just seems that it would be smart to sort of consolidate those efforts. I'm not sure how that looks on paper and how the budgets get allocated, but it just seems to make sense that we tackle them as a project and not two separate projects. I think it would be financially better for, for all parties involved. Um, and then I have two questions, if I may. Good. Um, one uh, does concern the aerial ladder. It's obviously a big purchase. It's over $2 million as projected, and I know fire equipment continues to escalate very quickly in price. Uh, and I know that talking with uh, folks in the business around the state that fire equipment now, if you order it, it takes years to get it, uh, maybe three or four for an aerial ladder truck. Is that something that we could start to nest egg money sooner? I know that we've never been big on uh, doing that, but is that an approach that we might consider here? Uh, 
And I know for rolling stock, we often look at this lease purchase thing. Is this not more of a, a purchase that we might consider a bond? Uh, I guess I'm looking for what the feedback is, at least out of the gate here. Yeah, I think once once we get a complete package back from the fire chief, you know, fire chief Scott and I will sit down, and yes, we could set up a capital reserve fund and set aside whether it's a hundred thousand dollars a year, what the figure might be, or consider a bond. Uh, really, at least purchase probably wouldn't fit the bill for this type of uh, expense, quite right. frankly. But absolutely, that's the discussion we'll have once we get a complete package and go to the finance committee and public safety. Committee. As one planning board member, and certainly as one city councilor, I would certainly be in favor of a, a pre-order here. Again, equipment's getting to the end of its useful life. If it's going to take three or four years to get it, we need to be sort of thinking that far uh, ahead. So I appreciate the thought that staff is looking at uh, with regard to that. My final question, I, I think this is for Jay, uh, regards the HVAC at Maplewood. I, I guess I was a little surprised to see that up here because I know that there was quite a bit of HVAC work done as part of an energy efficiency upgrade some years ago now, did we leave some parts undone, I guess is what I'm, yeah, I'm gathering that anyways. Yes, so, and again, I wasn't here, so I've pieced together and obviously I see what the needs are now. So a lot of the common spaces, being the cafeteria, um, the offices, those have new units. The issue we have particularly is classrooms those were, they have ventilation, they don't have air conditioning, uh, but with the spaces that we're having trouble with right now, not related to CAP, is like the common area in the, uh, one of the wings, the unit is done. Uh, the library is another unit that's, that's on the end of life. Um, so those were just items that just with cost overruns just sort of got kicked the can down the road, um, as I understand, so. Is that equipment, to your knowledge, original to the building? Or? I think it is. So how, that, that's how, part of the issue. With how old is getting, that building? I think it was around 80. Wow. So I think that even some of the units that have been replaced or have been taken out of service that are they're weirdly like in the ceiling, they've pillaged from those old units that aren't used anymore to pull parts, and now we can't, don't even have, aren't even able to pull any mini parts anymore. So it's a interesting dynamic fair, fair enough just yep. just kind of curious so thanks for that info that's all i have mr chairman thank you mr horton thank you mr chairman uh, i'd just like to start off by saying thanks to all the uh city staff and directors for their day-to-day -day efforts and all their work that went into this um i will say over the last six eight years of being on the board i've really seen a notable improvement in all the infrastructure and inventory um from when we when i first started one of the things that come to mind are the plow trucks. Uh, they really make a statement year after year. Um, and especially the painted plows really stand out to me. And, and it's really nice to see that, that effort put forward. Um, moving down, I, I really, really liked, I liked seeing that. Priority one projects remain sidewalks and paving. Uh, I think we've made vast improvements as well with that over the years. And I think it remains a hot topic and point of interest for the board as well, you know, as it's highlighted in the um, master plan. Um, I did review some of the uh, sewer projects and kind of just a thought, a comment there is, is, and you know, maybe this is for the city council too to consider, but are our sewer funds in line with the amount of work that we have coming over the years? And uh, I know there's been discussion over that um, in the past, but that was just kind of one of the take takeaways I, I had reviewing that. Um, great to hear that the code compliance officer has a truck now. I know he's been doing a lot of great work and uh, also helping out the board with revisiting um, projects that um, may not have been completed in full compliance. So I appreciate all the work he is doing as well. Uh, a couple comments for the school department um, with all the projects that you had listed for 2026 and as well as you know projects that may have gone um, that may have been unattainable in the years past my question is do we feel like a bond may be appropriate to address a lot of those projects that have not um, gone corrected in the past um, I don't know city manager or someone from the I, 
I, I guess is it feasible to address those issues to to lump them into a bond to really make some progress on those yeah looking at the projects they have listed I, I guess the best way I'd answer that certainly um, many of them are would be bond eligible so okay. you could issue a bond to fund those so and we have that conversation at the council and finance committee quite often um, lots of times what we're looking to do is to replace debt as it expires with new debt so the impact is a little bit less the schools a few years out before they retire any substantial debt so then the issue is is kind of what's your appetite for additional debt so it becomes a, a, how important is it how need sensitive is it today and then do we want to look at just issuing debt and getting those projects done Understood. thank you uh, and, and the reason why I bring that up too is because you know the middle school bathrooms continue to be on the list year after year and again they're on this year with a price tag of 500,000 mm -hmm. um, so I feel kind of you know maybe we, uh, as you said counselor you know maybe partnering uh, on something like that as well as paving would be in the bench best interest of everybody here for the city on that same thread though and maybe a question for Katie where does the state now stand like on school building aid for construction I mean I know these are renovations not new construction is there any aid available there or I'm guessing the answer is no because I mean yes and no there is money available but there's so many schools and districts that need it that it's they prioritize it I mean we did receive it from Maplewood project a few years ago so it just depends on the year and how much money is allocated. So I got Mr. Richardson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I want to I want to thank you all for the work that you do, and the, everything that's in here is is a need. It's not a want. It's definitely uh, old equipment, uh, roofs that need replacement, and various other things that. Are very much needed for um, the city the schools the kids um, people who do recreation in the city and all of that um, in the library all of it's it's good stuff that's needed so people are thinking into the future and putting together a plan and that's always a good thing um, I want to thank Bill O'Connor and, and you know, he puts a lot of thought into the letters he writes and the emails he sent and and whether I agree with him or not at least he touches on points that need to be addressed and I really do wish that there were people in the city more people in the city who would pay as much attention to what's going on in the city as he does and whether they come to meetings and comment uh, verbally uh, or send letters like this you know, I think a lot of that is needed. I think more people should be doing that. So thanks, Bill, for at least your efforts and uh, looking at the city and the future of uh, all of us here, who live here. Um, a couple of things that concern me about uh, Tier 3 projects. They tend to get put out, uh, out into the future. Um, we finally have one piece of... Um, asbestos left in the high school to take care of we we've known of this problem since the renovation that was completed in 97 so we're 27 years down the road now the because it's a uh, tier three uh, it's now scheduled for 2030 so we're talking about 33 years to get a project finished and yes we've done it piecemeal over time but the longer we wait, the more it costs. And uh, I, I think we got to be always aware that when we put something on a tier three, that there's a possibility of it being pushed out over a greater period of time, which is going to increase the cost to it. So uh, I wrote all over this different comments. Uh, I guess one more that, I, that I'll mention is that as, as, as we continue to add new sidewalks certainly the sidewalk plow is an additional sidewalk plow is something we need uh, the cost of that just absolutely boggles my mind when you look that we're also looking for, and and i and i know tonight mike said that the cost as he's looked at it is less than what it is in the packet um, but to consider that in the packet the cost of a sidewalk plow is two hundred and fifty 
thousand dollars, and yet an excavator costs less, a backhoe costs less, and a number of other pieces, a loader costs less for a piece of equipment that is used only in the winter time and not year round. And yes, it's needed, absolutely it's needed, but the cost of it just boggles my mind. So uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Yeah, um, just to echo everybody else, you guys did a great job this year. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoyed reading the entire packet. Um, you know, in some years I feel like there are more wants than needs, but this year I feel like it, everything is perfectly balanced. Everything here makes sense. It's moving the needle in the right direction for the right reasons. So I am, I'm in full support of everything you guys have done here. Um, ironically, I did have similar thoughts to uh, Councillor Witham in regards to Blackwater Road. Um, he's 100% right. I don't know if you guys are out there driving that road, but I drive it every day, multiple times, and there's always somebody walking or biking or something. You know, it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. So maybe not now, but maybe in the next couple of years, it makes sense to incorporate the 108 project with um, our uh, sidewalk program that we got further up the street. Um, I was also thinking about the phase three and uh, Mr. Horton hit it, uh, Mr. Richardson hit it. And it makes you wonder, you know, for some of these bigger projects that have big ticket items, you know, um, you talked about the, the HVAC system that they just blew, right? Um, it makes you wonder, like, should we work towards chipping away, having a small kitty that we build up over time, you know? Um, you know, like any time that I go and pay cash, I, I keep my change. I throw it into a, into a jar. You never know, and it, it's there. You, you've used it. You've already spent it, but it's there, right? I don't know if such a thing is, is possible to do. Recommendation, do it, don't do it, whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, in, in general, I really like what you guys have done. I like where you're going. I'm in full support. I will be voting for everything. So thank you. Mr. Witham. I guess a couple more comments that surfaced since we've had the conversation ongoing here. Uh, Mr. Horton mentioned about our water and sewer funding. I will tell you that council has routinely revisited our water and sewer yeah. rates uh, with the help of city staff to make sure they align with what is projected in terms of our capital projects. And that's sort of a rolling analysis that we do. but. Uh, I'd have Bob or Scott jump in if you think otherwise, but uh, I think we're pretty well positioned right now uh, with our water and sewer rates. But again, that's a constant, almost cyclical evaluation to make sure that we're on target there. So I feel pretty comfortable with where we're at there. Uh, the other comment that I'll mention, and maybe it's obvious, maybe it's not, city manager has in the CIP uh, for the coming year $120,000 for sidewalks. Uh, as chair of public works and environment, what I've come to recognize is that doesn't go very far. Uh, if not for money, we would do a lot more sidewalks, right? Uh, the cost to redo a section of sidewalk is more expensive than the same length of roadway, oddly enough. Uh, so the dollars just don't go far there. I, I think council is generally aware of the funding shortfall there. It's just how do we move the needle without severe impact to the tax rate and that's that balance so I just offer that up the good news is is when we do like a complete streets like constitutional way we're able to tackle sidewalks as part of that we've plucked away like the high street sidewalk with grants or special project funding so uh, I, th I think we've made some headway on sidewalks uh, maybe not as much as people would like because you're right it is uh, sort of the noise in the community uh, but uh, Council's aware, uh, and we're working at it to the best degree that we can. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Richardson. Yeah, to that, to that point, um, having worked in public works for a number of years down in Hampton and doing plowing and sidewalks and that kind of thing, the maintenance of sidewalks directly affects how those sidewalk plows work. If you got a sidewalk that is out of balance and out of whack, it's going to ruin your sidewalk plow the first time it goes over it. So, you know, we've got to be we've got to be conscious of that kind of thing. And and so that, to me, that you know, if we're going to be buying sidewalk plows, we got to keep our sidewalks up to snuff. So, 
Mr. Barry? Yeah, and, and actually, I'm going to double that, too, because uh, I'll tell you, the, the clean, the complete streets and the sidewalks, all the updates that we're doing, they not only do they look good, they're functional, people see it, the image of the city is good. It's, I think we're doing it at the right, the, 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 the rate that we're doing it is good. I think the amount of money we're putting towards investing into our streets and investing in our utilities and our sidewalks, it's right. The balance is good. Um, I would certainly encourage, do not go backwards on it. Keep going. Mr. Horton. I'll just end with uh, commenting, uh, looking forward to seeing the upside of High Street um, be uh, wrapped up and uh, completed. So that, uh, you know, I, I think like we've said before, you know, that's the, uh, the, main, the main street coming into downtown. So it really, you know, we should be putting our best foot forward there. So a lot of good stuff happening. Any further comments from the board? You ready for a motion, Mr. Chairman? I will entertain a motion. I'd move, so with them. I'd move that the uh, capital improvements program uh, presented today be forwarded to the city council uh, with the endorsement of the planning board uh, with uh, just the notations of some of the comments that have been made here tonight about uh, connectivity, uh, the sidewalks, uh, uh, about maybe leveraging our road paving with school paving needs. Some of those comments I think should be included in the letter. Uh, but uh, otherwise, uh, with the endorsement. Motion made by Mr. Witham, Second. seconded by Mr. Barry. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Motion passes. This time, does Mr. Baltimore have a summary or are you closing comments or whatever? <laughs> This is your last CIP, Mr. Belmore. I don't know if you've recognized that. Or no, it's been a pleasure to work with you on the CIP program, and um, you always always uh, offer some poignant comments, and uh, we appreciate your oversight and your input. And um, I certainly um, will miss presenting my CIP every year. So I'm very grateful, and again, thank you to all the staff for the hard work, and um, I'm good. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion made by Mr. Witham. Second by Mr. Horton. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Thank you very much.